So to get started, as we can see right here, it's going to be fairly straightforward and simple. One, you need a regular head screwdriver. Two, you need a Phillips head screwdriver. And three, you need a, if I'm not mistaken, this is a torque bit number 15, a torque bit number 15 wrench in order to take this thing apart. So let's get started. As you can see right here, we look on the bottom, we noticed there's no screws on the bottom. Hmm. Look across the sides, no screw holes, very elegant design, very good, very elegant design. Looking at this though, I know how this thing is put together and it all depends on how quickly you want to get to the innards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not do what I did last time and actually start at the most appropriate section which is at the top here. So I'm going to take my regular head screwdriver and this is, you know, you don't need to jam it like you're trying to bend, you know, a piece of steel or something. There's this ring on the top and all it's held on is a double sided tape. I'm going to take my regular head screwdriver, put it underneath the ring, and slowly lift up on the ring. Slowly. And I'm going to keep slowly lifting up on the ring because there's going to be double sided tape on the back side of that. Now that came off a little bit easier because I already did this once before. So for when you do it, you're going to be, you're going to hear the glue sort of like unattached, not the glue, the tape unattaching itself from the top. So that's the top ring right over there. Put the top ring, don't put it face down because it'll stick. Next we want to look at, and there are three Phillips head screwdrivers, I mean three Phillips head screws keeping this top plate, which is the volume control, attached to this. So that's the next part of the disassembly. Take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'll go ahead and disconnect or remove the Phillips head screws. Top piece is ready to come off. So as you can see in this top piece, we have the gearing mechanism for the volume control, I'll get a better there, and a zero force insertion ribbon cable. The ribbon cable is white on one side, blue on the other. I'll try to show that to you here shortly. Um, the blue side actually goes towards the outside rim. So if you want to know, hey, I took it apart, I don't remember which way it's supposed to go, the blue side of the cable faces outward. What I'm going to do is disconnect the zero force insertion pin cable there we go now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up close to the camera so you can see exactly what I'm looking at whoa sorry about that so here we have the internal connection right here this is what connects with the lights and the volume control see this little gear knob right here that's the resistance you feel when you're turning this thing volume up and down it feels like a very smooth action that's the gearing mechanism right now you got a connection here for the lights. We don't need to take this whole thing apart. There's nothing else underneath here that we need. The bottom side is the connection point, which is right here. The top side is the light. That in itself is its whole piece. I'm going to go ahead and put this next to the screws that I took apart. Right over there. A little bit off camera, but you don't need to see that. Next. So the next part is, look at this part right here, and you notice I have four torque nuts outside the rim. This holds this cover plate on, which holds this whole speaker casing on. So I'm going to take my screwdriver, pop out the Phillips. Let me get you a little bit closer there. There we go. Take the torque. Take this. Today's my off day, so I'm dressed in comfy clothes today. Sorry. Okay, I uh, had to go get my other Torx, I made a mistake. It's not a T15 Torx socket, it's actually a T10 Torx socket that we need. Uh, oops, so if you're watching this video, go back, ignore the T15, choose a T10. I'm gonna put this in here, and now there's four Torx screws around the outside I'm gonna go ahead and take apart. Put that right there. Next piece should come off, just like this. As you can see right here, it's just the cover plate right here. You got your four screws. You got your indentation right here where, let me pull this up. As you can see right here, we have this little module that, that rises up. And this guy has a little indent, indentation to get the thing right, right there. So this white piece sits in here to keep it tight. 
this whole piece comes together like this. Let me go ahead and put it together like this. And you can see right here it turns. It gives you that smooth turning sensation, which is then transferred through the ribbon cable connection, which is right there, um, through the rest of the system. So now we get to start getting our first glimpse into the actual system. As you can see right here, oh, just picked it right up. This whole thing right here, you can see inside, we're starting to get to some good parts in here. Case comes off, just a hollow case, little light fabric on the inside, perforated metal on the outside, and here we go. Here is now the innards of your Harman Kardon Invoke. As you can see, we have three woofers, three tweeters, and two access port baffles. I assume these are dual purpose. One, they cover the electronics, and I'm going to take them off here in a second. Second, they give a reverb for the woofers, the pressure differential. Now, excuse me, I'm getting over a cold, another reason why I'm home. So, I'm sorry for the nasal. So what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and take off this baffle right here and take off this baffle so you can see what's underneath them. Those are four torque nuts as well. Okay, so we're back. What I'm going to do is I remove the four torque nuts right here. This baffle just comes up, lifts right off like this. As you can see this baffle, what it is, is basically a rubber outline right here with a metal plate. As you can see right here. It sort of moves back and forth a little bit. So it gives the inside, when the speakers are going, it, the differential of pressure allows the speakers to move more freely. And it just covers the electronics. So what do we have? We have two baffles, both removed. So we have one baffle covering up the, wi the wireless connection. You can see right here, there's your wireless chipset. You got two leads coming off of that wireless chipset. I don't know if you can see that easily or not. But you got two leads coming off the wireless chipset right here going down into the antenna, which is this part right here. That's your antenna. I flip this bad boy around and there's the guts of it, right? So here you have, I believe, your amplifiers underneath this heat sink right here. You have your speaker contacts right down over in here. You have your, looks like a DSP chip up here. I haven't really looked at the components that thoroughly quite yet. To look to see what they actually are, but there it is right there. Um, you have your tweeters, your woofers, and I will take probably closer pictures of this thing here. Okay, I'm switching over to the hand cam now so I can get a better view of the actual innards and show you a little bit of close of what it looks like. As you can see right here, this appears to be the PA amplifier, the op amps right there for the output to the speakers. You can see those wires right here. You can see the, let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. You can see these wires right there, the yellow and black. Those are the tweeter, three pairs for each tweeter. Right there is a woofer. This ribbon cable actually goes down down here and that's for the power and the USB connections. Um, I, I'll take off that bottom piece here shortly just so you can see what it looks like. Moving across, a couple interesting things. I noticed there's three unused headers on this one, right? So we have an unused header right there. Uh, that's a five pin header. There's a four pin header right there. Um, could have been used for debugging, other thing. And then there's a, a large pin header. Looks like a 12 pin header at the top of this guy. Is it 12 pin or it's 14? Uh, let me see if I get a better view of it. Three, four, five, six, seven, 14 pin. So there's a 14 pin header. There's the chipset right there. Um, looks like the DSP chip. Get a close in and I'll go research that in a little bit here to get a little bit more details on that one. Logic gate. Um, just looking around, just you know, I'm not a hardware designer per se. I've been around hardware long enough to get a gl glimpse of it. Uh, but I got buddies who are the actual hardware engineers, uh, so they are probably saying, Yeah, you idiot, that's what that is. Oh, look at that, that's that part right there. You know what that is right there. Yeah, I get it. Um, but there seems to be unused headers on here, future functionality, part of debugging. Um, I don't quite know. 
What can a five pin do? Uh, what can a four pin do? Um, what can you use those for? I'm thinking the four pin might have been a line out because what you have is you got your least your two lines plus a ground plus I don't know uh, some oh a switch could be the switch to either disable or enable. So that's that top part. That's that part. Let me go ahead and flip it over so you guys could see. And there's the wireless card. I don't know why it's so big. And there's your wireless antenna cables going down into your receiver. I mean, sorry, your trans, your antenna, which is buried in this part of it right here. Yeah, I know it's around a little bit. I apologize. So that's the innards right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. I actually put the camera back up, and we're going to disassemble the bottom base unit so you can see what's underneath there. Okay, we're back in here. Uh, as we, I did a quick tour of the hand of the inside, and now we're going to look at the bottom piece. As you can see on the bottom piece, um, there's no nuts, no bolts, no screws, no nothing. Well. There's this rubberized bottom coating on here. If you look, when you see yours up close, you see a little seam where the plastic here meets the rubberized bottom. So in order to take the rubberized bottom out, it's a little bit of effort. You just got to keep prying it away off the lid. Just keep pulling it away. Slowly the tape will give way. And you can see it's nothing more than a rubberized bottom with some tape on the bottom holding it to this bottom piece right down over here. Now you're probably asking what the heck is with this cord. Uh, I already did one slight mod to this unit. I, I was afraid of something might happen, which it did. Uh, it didn't quite give me the results I wanted. Uh, in short, I was able to connect it up to my whole house audio system, but it created a, what do you want to call it, timing effect, where the audio still hit the speakers of the Harman Kardon, so the audio would play on here, but it did take a few milliseconds, probably 50, 60 milliseconds, something like that, in order to take the audio from this device and go to my whole house stereo and then rebroadcast that to the speakers. So what you had is you had a little bit of an echo. If you've ever been to a concert, you know what I'm talking about. You hear music coming from the stage and then slightly after you hear music coming from the speakers. You get a little bit of woo woo woo. Woo woo woo, that reverb effect. Horrible. Got a way to solve it, but that's for video number two. So we look at the bottom over here and we have Torx in here as well. There we go. So as you can see, this part here slides out, which reveals the underneath, which is comprised of two components, currently two components, well three, I like. So you have your USB extension, which I'm not sure they said is for future use, <coughs> excuse me, firmware updates, I don't know. Here's your power, and I'll go ahead and put this on a hand cam so you can see it a little bit easier. And then here's your three buttons on the bottom, you have a system reset, Bluetooth pairing, and um, uh, microphone, mute the microphone and Bluetooth pairing. Right now this plate right here is held on by one screw and that's the screw that goes through this circuit board right here. So I'm going to take my trusty hex take off that screw this bottom plate comes undone, which then exposes the rest of the ribbon cables. As you can see right here, these are mostly your DC volts coming in right here, plus your USB headers on that circuit board. Um, I'll get the hand cam so you can see the ribbon cables a little bit easier. And then you just have your three woofers in a triangle shape, three tweeters in your triangle shape. Uh, you have your switches down here that I just described, power and USB coming in through here. So I wanted to give you a closer heads up view on what these components look like that I was talking about. 
So you can see on the bottom, you can see right here, we have our power line coming in here and your USB, which connects up to these headers right across this row right here. And then you have the switches right here. That's like I said, your three switches. That's your reset device, mute the microphone and Bluetooth pairing. Those guys connect up to these ribbon cables on this side right here. As you can see, these different ribbon cables right through here, which control the power and, I'm sorry, where am I? Uh, there we are. That control the power, those ribbon cables come up into this guy right over here. Then there's the other set right there, which goes into the circuit board. And then there's the third set right over there for power. You can see the red wire over there. Uh, let me zoom in on that. See if you can get it oh, too much. Okay, there we go. You can see it right there. There's the power. There's the control system. So that's the internals of your Harman Kardon Invoke. Now my next part is I'm going to sit here and show you why I'm so upset at Harman Kardon and Microsoft because again, if you said my earlier video, um, earlier part of the video, this cannot be acted as a transmitter. You cannot connect this device to an external speaker. You cannot connect this device to an external amplifier. You can't connect this device to anything external. It is what it is, which is kind of odd because I'm going to show you something here. And this is how I'm also looking at how this product is pretty much a dead-end product. 